The first frame is a floating frame for this really cool canvas painting by an Italian artist that was bought in Venice a very long time ago. I almost always make my floating frames from store-bought 42 by 19 mil premium pine. It's just very convenient and cost effective. First step in the process is to cut the pieces to rough length with a handsaw, leaving them a little bit longer than needed. Then using my zero clearance miter sled, I cut a miter on the end of each piece and then cut them to length with the second mitre at the other end. Now, no need to rush here. I'm taking it slow to stop any blowout on that last little bit of the cut. Next, I cut a rebate on the inside rear of each piece for the back of board, just using the table saw and taking several cuts, moving the fence over a little each time. Now it's time to drill the dowel holes, and for this, as I said, I use the Dowmax doweling jig. I've got two frame pieces in the vise together here just to give the jig extra support. The jig works on a tick mark system where you mark your preferred reference face and edge, and then just line these up with the tick marks on the jig, and you can't go wrong. So with these pieces, I'm using the outside face of the frame as my reference face, and the front edge of the frame as my reference edge. The jig is set up for 19 mil material as standard, but with the addition of some of the supplied spaces, you can move the center of the holes like I've done here to drill into the thicker part of the timber. With all the dowel holes drilled, it's time for glue up. I glued some clamping blocks onto the frame pieces using Starbond CA glue and some masking tape. These are just the cutoffs from when I cut the miters on each of the pieces. Sometimes when gluing frames together, I feel more comfortable just gluing them up in two stages, which is what I did here. Once the two halves are dry, I then glue them together to finish the frame. Check square. Perfect. The way I do my floating frames has changed slightly from my original video I posted on how to make these. And that is, I now put in a full board as the backing. It's easier and quicker and provides a lot of flexibility for positioning the screws to attach the canvas and the hanging hardware. The back of board gets painted black just around the edge that's visible in the small gap between the frame and the canvas to give that shadow effect.
The stretches for this canvas were very shallow so I added these blocks to them to bring the painting forward and flush with the front of the frame. Next, the back of board gets nailed in place with 15 mil brads. And you'll notice here that I've already finished the frame, which I didn't record because basically I just forgot, but it wasn't very interesting anyway. The stain was provided by the client. To fit the canvas, I measured out where I wanted the fixing screws to go and drilled out the back of board. I then transferred those holes to the canvas itself and drilled through the spacer blocks because I wanted the screws to go into the canvas stretcher for extra security. Then with the use of packers to center the canvas in the frame, I screwed it in place through the backer board. And that's the first one done. The pieces for the second frame are hiding in this big chunk of cedar I had in my wood stack. I ran it over the jointer first to get one flat face and then two flat faces 90 degrees to the first. I wasn't concerned about getting those two opposite faces parallel to each other because this piece was going to be ripped into four and I just wanted some flat faces to reference on the table saw. I had a 10 inch blade in my saw at the time and couldn't quite get all the way through that piece so I finished the cut with the bandsaw. And then cleaned up the cut with a hand plane. Then I ripped the two halves into half again. And then ripped them down further, closer to the final size I was happy with. Looking back at the video, I have no idea why I cut these pieces in two passes when I cut the previous piece in one pass. To help prevent tear out, I checked the pieces for grain direction and then marked that direction of travel on each piece so I was planing with the grain when putting these through the thicknesser to get rid of the saw marks. Then it was time to cut a profile in these pieces to give them a bit of depth and interest. And the beauty about this process is that there was no plan. It was just me trying different things and developing the shape as I went. The first cut was a shallow chamfer and I didn't measure out that angle, I just went with something that I thought looked good. I cleaned up the saw marks with a hand plane before moving over to the router table and using a cove bit to add another element to the profile. With the profile done, I then cut the rebate on the back side of the pieces by making multiple passes on the table saw, moving the fence over a little at a time until I had the width I wanted. Next step was to cut the miters on one end of each piece using my zero clearance miter sled and then cutting them to length with the second miter.
With these pieces, I used the back as my reference face because it was the only flat face. And I used the edge of the rebate as my reference edge. Doing it this way would ensure that the inside corners of the frame were perfectly aligned. And if there was any slight difference in the width of the pieces, that's easily fixed on the outside of the frame. Then it was time for glue up, which I did all at once for this one, and it went together perfectly. The finishing touch to the frame was a beeswax timber polish finish. This beeswax polish only slightly darkens the timber and leaves a lovely smooth finish.